All right, let's break these down first. So first of all, we have the rectangle, then we have the text, and then we have the icon part. Those are the main components of this notification. I actually built a macro for these and I've made these available for all the Swabby Club members. So if this is something that you really, really want, you can become a member just for one month even, and then download these and other assets. So let me just quickly show you how it works. We have the notification animation right here, and this is dynamic, meaning that at the end, it will just go back to the outro basically, right? And here you have the size and position controls. If you want to move these around, you can even add extra animations if you want right here. You can flip these, although I'm not sure why you would want to do these. Now you have the icon settings right here. Here you can adjust the actual position of the icon right here, but this is not working because this is not any icon. This is for when you want to change this message icon. So if you change this to custom, you can actually drag a file right here, but sometimes it just doesn't work. So you're going to have to browse these and then find the DR logo file that you want to use, for example. And then we have the DaVinci Resolve logo right here. So you can then change the message here, maybe DaVinci. So maybe one DaVinci has a a uh, linked app for your phone and your render is done then they can do that and then you get a message on your phone for when your video has finished rendering right then we have the timer right here which is the text right here and we have the drop shadow options if you want to change these make these zero then it will be a lot less powerful right now this one is also set up as a group, so you can open these in Fusion and then you can adjust things right here if you want to, because there's two drop shadows right here. So we have this first drop shadow for the text and rectangle, and then we have another overall drop shadow that takes everything into account. So you can come into Fusion and then adjust things and play around and modify these even more if you want to do so. So if you want to download these, make sure to check out the Suave Club there you can find these if you are already a member now if you don't want to become a member there's no big deal you can just build these because i showed you the step by step on how to build this right here all right so we're going to create a new fusion composition first of all and you can rename these whatever you want inside the fusion composition first we're going to add a background node right here and we're going to make sure to go to image and then deactivate auto resolution now we can turn the alpha to zero. Right, the first element that we're gonna create is the rectangle. To create the rectangle, first of all, we're gonna press Ctrl and Spacebar and add an S rectangle. On this S rectangle, we're gonna use these settings right here. 0 0.452 for the width, 0 0.076 on the height, and then 0 0.5 on the corner radius. Now we're gonna press Ctrl and Spacebar and add an S renderer. On this renderer, we're also going to have to make sure to deactivate the auto resolution. Now for your rectangle to look a little bit more transparent, make sure to go to style and then set up these settings right here. Now let's add the icon part. First, I'm going to press Ctrl G to activate the guides here. Now I'm going to import an SVG in this case, but you can also use a PNG if you want to do that. First of all, go to import and then SVG. And after that, you'll just find your SVG. I already have this imported right here, and that is what it looks like. As you can see here, the SVG doesn't come with the renderer. I actually turned a normal SVG into an S polygon by copying the polygon of the SVG and then simply right click right here and paste the settings. That way we have an S polygon and not a normal polygon. All right, now we can connect these to the renderer with the merge node right here. And now we can go to the merge and set up transform node for these. And we're gonna adjust the position. So that is a little bit smaller and then move these to the side. Now we can add the text. But before, let me just share with you a little trick that I use sometimes. Since we don't have automatic alignment options right here, like in other programs like Figma, for example, you can create a background node, connect these in front of your element and then use polygons to create some sort of lines that will help you guide where you want your element to be. Now I'm going to leave that there for now and we're going to create the text that we're gonna use. First of all, let's start by the text for the time. So I'm just gonna rename this time and I can already connect these to this merge node right here. I'm going to write now right here 
and change the font to whatever you want. Now for these time tags, we're going to make sure that the anchor point is set to the right. And now we can position these right here and then adjust the size of it. If you want, you can also set the vertical anchor to be on the top. That way you can align these a little bit more easily. And if you adjust the size, then it will become bigger by taking those points into account. All right, we can also change the color of these to a little bit of a darker color. Then I'm going to press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy these. And I'm going to rename these Sender. Now I'm going to change the horizontal anchor of these and then move the position for these to be right here. And I can make these a little bit bigger if I want. Now both of those texts are aligned. All right, I'm going to do this once more and I'm going to change these to message. And I am going to move these a little bit lower like that. So they are both aligned. And then I can just write whatever text we want right here. But that's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm also going to make these like that. OK, now we have our text. You can always modify these as much as you want, obviously. Now that we have the text right there, we can jump into the next section. OK, let's take a look at the animations that we have right here. First, we have an opacity animation and also a little bit of movement. And we have one for the text, one for the actual rectangle, and then one for the icon right here. Now, this one only has an opacity animation. Both of these have a little bit of opacity and movement animation. And then the rectangle as a whole has its own opacity animation as well. Before we animate these, let's get rid of that lines that we had right there because we're not going to use that anymore. We're going to add a transform node right here and we're going to rename these main movement. Now we're going to use 14 frames in this case. First of all, we're going to create a position keyframe and also a size keyframe right here. And we can go two frames ahead and do the same. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to add a little bit of a bounciness, but that's not a must do. All right, let's go to frame zero and we're going to adjust the position of these. We're going to make these come from here. I think that's a good distance. And then we can also adjust the size a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much because we're going to animate the opacity later on. All right. Now here we can actually make these go a little bit past the point right here and this one as well. And that is our linear animation. Well, that is good. Could be better, right? We're going to use the spline for these and selecting both of those points. Press fit to screen. Now press Ctrl A and you can press S and then T and adjust the ease in and out values. That looks all right, but we always have to make sure to adjust things properly. If you want, then you can hold Ctrl right here so that you can modify these more in detail. I think that's good enough for now. You can also press F and then press T and that will have a little bit of a different type of animation as well. It has a little bit more of a stop right here and then it jumps back, which both of them are viable options. You can choose whichever you like best. OK, since we already have these main movement right here, we can actually just copy these and add the same movement to these center and message. So we're going to press Ctrl C and then I'm going to paste this right here. And I'm just going to rename these sender movement. The reason why I'm renaming these is just so that I know which one is which. Now, this one is a little bit too much, right? And first of all, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a delay to these. So I'm going to go to frame zero and then open these in the spline viewer. Press Ctrl A and I'm going to move everything holding shift. That way there's a little bit of a delay. Now I'm going to adjust the position of these. So instead of being 0 0.5, I'm just going to make these go from a little bit like that. And this one doesn't exactly need to have the size animation, so we can just get rid of that. Now, I'm also going to get rid of the second one right here. And we have the text right there. Now, I'm going to go and copy these once more. And then I'm going to set these up right here, holding shift. And I'm going to rename these. I'm going to do that same process again, just going one frame forward, looking at everything and moving these to frame two. So there is a little bit of a delay between those two. OK, now we're going to take those two keyframes that we have here and I'm going to animate the opacity for these. I'm going to go to shading and then selecting this element. I'm going to create one keyframe here and make this zero. I'll go to 15 and then make this one. I'm going to do the same here, but we're going to take frame two and frame 16. So I'm going to go to shading, 
opacity zero and then 16 there we have it now we have those two moving like that we're also going to go to the time and we're going to set this up to be at zero so we're going to go to shading opacity set this to zero now 14 and then one select all of these and then adjust the spline tool and actually get rid of the displacement right here so we don't we're not affecting these and then just try to match these within ease and out options right here now the next thing that we can do is animate our icon in this case i'm going to use this transform that we have here i'm going to actually name these icon transform i'm going to animate the angle so it's a little bit to the side and also the size i'm going to go to frame 14 or let's go to frame 15 and set another keyframe for these now this one has to be a little bit smaller and then this one has to be zero I'm go to the spline fit to screen so we can see everything now we can press f and try to match the other ones that we have as well now let's animate the opacity as a whole so in this case we're going to use this merchant over here and we're going to go to frame 14 now go to blend set this up to one and then at zero we're going to set this up to zero now on the spline tool we can select everything and then press F. Again, we can press T and adjust the ease in and out values. And now we have our pop-up animation. Now, if you want, you can always add more things like drop shadows, but that is up to you. And as always, you can go back and modify everything that you want in here.